This presentation is my assessment and summary of the peer-reviewed article by Chris Mato Numta, Native Faculty, Higher Education, Racism, and Survival. This presentation is my assessment and summary of the peer-reviewed article by Chris Mato Numpa, Fac Native Faculty, Higher Education, Racism, and Survival. Chris Numpa's first 10 years at a Midwestern university was marked by hostility and racism as he tried to pioneer a program called American Indian Studies and Dakota Studies. In his essay, he comments on several acts of racism he endured the sources of support he received, and how the program had progressed at the time of the article. As I read the article, I made a few observations. Numpa's experiences were not dissimilar to those children and young adults who were also courageous when uh, desegregating the schools in the South. Equality happens in small steps with small victories won often in large battles. Minorities should not forget or diminish the work that others put before them. And the saddest and most shocking observation is that education is not always an indicator of how a person will behave. Prejudices are often stronger than the education they've received as indicators of people's conduct. Numpa <clears throat> went through two grievance problem processes a close vote on program status, a close vote on his tenure, and the cutting of his program and position twice, uh, e a denial of tenure, and many instances of racism, intimidation, and harassment by administration and faculty. The first grievance filed was not by NUFA, but by the faculty union because the, pres the university president violated several contract stipulations to bring him to the university. Numpa was controversial from the beginning. He would prevail and the drastic action taken by the university president would propel change, albeit slowly. The first of the two close votes Numpa experienced was regarding his program status. Since his arrival, he had to borrow class numbers from other programs for his classes for anthropo from anthropology and history. Neither was keen on sharing, citing his not being an anthropologist nor a historian. He agreed, stating he just needed some damn numbers for his courses. Two years after arriving at the starting and, and starting the program, AISDS, finally received program status. Three years later, the program was on the chopping block. The reasons given were severe budgetary uh, difficulties, enrollment patterns, and shifts in the affected programs and development of new programs. The low enrollment was primarily due to all of the courses in the program were only offered as electives and none were part of the Liberal Arts Social Sciences Corps and thus were not required for any majors. Another close vote was over NUMPA's tenure. The vote was eight against and seven for and literally fractured the social science department. Professors did not speak to one another on opposite sides of the issue for months and even years. Numpa said this, Numpa said this, we were all like little kids with PhDs fighting with each other. We did not play well with one another. He filed a grievance and it was unsuccessful. His tenure was denied. The following year would be his terminal year at the university. He filed another grievance for tenure, uh, for denying his tenure. This process went to the university regents and it was agreed that he would go through the tenure process again. This time, the process bypassed the department, the academic dean, and the vice president for academic affairs and involved only the university president, the interfaculty organization, and labor relations director. After nearly three, a three-year ordeal, Numfa was granted tenure. He thought his troubles were behind him, but yet another round of cutting the AISDS program would befall him. The same reasons for cutting the program were given as before. A new administration stepped in and ceased the action to cut the program, and it was saved yet again. Some of the instances of racism and harassment 
endured include the following. After complaining that he thought a dean who was to compete or to complete NUPA's professional development plan could not be fair and impartial, he received letters from three administrators who, in his words, were coming down on him for his criticism and trying to intimidate him into submission. When he was denied for tenure, the Vice President for Academic Affairs personally delivered the letter of denial 15 minutes before he was to deliver a presentation at a conference, possibly to get NIMPA to pr publicly say something and have grounds for termination. Some of the faculty would advise students not to take AISDS courses. A dean called students at home asking about negative comments toward NUMPA or the AISDS program. NUMPA received anonymous letters attacking him, accu accusatory, impugning his character, and otherwise hostile in nature. NUMPA did not, or NUMPA did receive support, however. A faculty advisor committee, which he fashioned at the behest of the university soon after his arrival on campus, became one of the strongest sources he had. These fellow faculty members defended him and the program during the proposed cuts and the tenure battles. Students were also a, sort of, a source of support. A junior English major who was a supporter of the program organized a protest and a march in support of keeping the program alive when it was slated to be cut. Another history honor student who wanted a minor in AISDS put pressure on the vice president to approve a minor program he had been slow playing. A non-traditional student who was a prospective teacher worked to have AISDS courses approved for the regional studies program at the university. Obviously, NIMFA received support from the administration when he, when he arrived at the university. However, the next two administrations were not supportive of him or the program. Not until 2002, nearly 10 years later after his arrival and another administration change, did he receive support from the university president again. NIMFA explains, for those wanting to lead in a hostile or racially charged environment like was his higher education institution, they should do the following. Find and build support among faculty, students, and administration, and use these support personnel to create goals, strategize, organize, and negotiate plans. Thank you.